But who is chosen is the question. And we will bring it Son out. of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. Set up the standard upon the walls of Babylon. Make the watch strong. Set up the watchmen. Set up the watchmen mean put the nation in order. Except for the fact that you are the 12 tribes of Israel. That's right. Read it again. 
and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, so he left out of the church, and he sat, he left out of the synagogue, and sat upon the Mount of Olives, read on, the disciples came unto him privately saying, they got him privately now, because Christ had him shook, when he told him, you see this temple is going to be destroyed, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down, the same thing is going to happen to the United States of America, the temple went down first, America's going to burn. Pick up a newspaper, look at your TV, look at what's going on. There's a war going on which is called Armageddon. Destruction is coming to the United States of America. That's right. Read on. Tell us, when shall these things be? So at least they had enough sense back then to ask, when shall these things be? Read on. And what shall be the sign of thy coming? What are signs that you will be returning to the earth? Because they wanted to know. The Bible says no man knows the day or the hour, but there are signs that are clear to show that Christ is a returning to the earth. Read on. And of the end of the world. And of the what? And of the end of the world. So that's what we're bracing ourselves for, ladies and gentlemen. This world is coming to an end. All of you that are passing by not listening, our job is to come out here and warn you. The Bible tells you that most of you are not going to listen. You mean... Um... 14 verse 8. Zechariah 13 verse 8. Now these are the statistics of how much of you are going to die when this destruction comes. Read on. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, say, all the land where the Israelites dwell, the 12 tribes of Israel, read on. Say if the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. So if you get a pie and you cut it into three parts, only one part is going to be saved. More than half of that pie is going to be destroyed. 66% of the people are going to be destroyed. Read on. But the third shall be left therein. So the Most High said that there's going to be one third of the Israelites that are going to listen to us. They're going to take you. They're going to repent. They're going to keep the commandments and they're going to come back to God. Read on. And I will bring the third part through the fire. And you will what? And I will bring the third part through the fire. So there's a way to escape this destruction. The God of the Bible, of the God of the Israelites says that he will do what? And will bring the third part through the fire. He's going to bring the one third of the Israelites that repent and keep his commandments through the fire. Read on. And will refine them as silver is refined. Because when you find silver in its purest form, it's not like what you see in the jewelry store. It's filthy. There are elements in there that have to be taken out. So when it goes through a refining process, you remove the copper, you remove the tin, you remove the zinc, you remain, remove the elements that don't belong there, then you polish it up. So that's what the Most High is doing with us. Read on. And we'll try them as gold is tried. Because gold gets tried in the fire. It has to be melted down. We have to be melted down because we have sin inside of us. So Christ is explaining, go back to Matthew chapter 24, why a time is coming when the earth has to be destroyed for the wickedness of our people, for the rebellion of our people, for the ones of our people that want to walk and act like nothing's going to happen. Read it again from the top, Matthew 24 verse 1. Matthew 24 verse 1, Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came unto him, but to show him the building of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things. So Christ had to constantly keep repositioning the thought process of the disciples. He says, See ye not all these things? You don't see what's going on around you? Read on. Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And in 70 AD, a father and son team, Titus and Vespasian, and surrounded Jerusalem, starved the people out and destroyed it. Okay, and the remnant of the Israelites that are still behind, they were enslaved. The both of them flee to a place we now call Africa, which you can't find the word Africa in the Bible. But the bulk of the Israelites took the heed of Christ and went there. And eventually, those people were turned on thousand years later and rounded up and put on cargo slave ships. And that's why we have these pictures here. Read on. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives. So he left from the synagogue, sat upon the Mount of Olives. Read on. The disciples came unto him privately saying, Tell us, when shall be these things? So at least they had enough sense to ask, when is this destruction coming? When is this destruction coming to our people, to our temple? When is God going to turn his back on us? As he did what we're going to read now. Read on. And what shall be the sign of that coming? What will be the sign of Christ's return to the earth? Because the whole world is waiting for him to come back. But they're waiting for a blonde haired, blue eyed man with pale skin, which is a lie. The Bible has this description of what Christ looks like. Read on. And of the end 
of the world. And of the when? At the end of the world. So that's what we're talking about now. This place is going to be destroyed. There will be no more Bronx. There will be no more Manhattan. There will be no more Queens. There will be no more New Jersey. This place is going to be destroyed. We not. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. So the first warning he gave was, Take heed that no man deceive you. Our people have been deceived. How? But many shall come in my name, say, I am Christ. So you got to scratch your head and say, when did that happen? Because as I said earlier, when Christ walked the earth, nobody had any respect for him. Okay? The people eventually turned their back on him and said, crucify him. Okay? So he said, after he dies, a time is going to come where people are going to come and tell lies in his name. Those lies started in the 14th century. Okay? With this image that you have here. Lies were told concerning who Christ was. After hundreds of years passed, lies were told concerning who Christ is. So they switched him from what? From black to a white man. Read it again. But many shall come in my name, say, I am Christ. That was the many, you have many people in Catholicism, many people in Christianity telling you Christ is white and not black. Read on. And shall deceive many. And that's why you're deceived. You're saying, what does it know? What does that matter? So what? Color doesn't matter. So what? Who cares what color he is? If color don't matter, then let's call him the color that the Bible describes him. That's Give right. me that. Revelation chapter 1 verse 13. If color don't matter, let's just use the color that the Bible describes him as. Okay. Color does matter. Because y'all right. look up to that white skin as that is God. Right. Y'all look up to that white skin that it is right. Y'all look up to your black skin that you're nothing. Y'all look up to your dark skin like you're nobodies, that you're low lives. And they knew that. They knew once they changed the image of Jesus Christ from black to white, they will put you to a low state. And that's how you are now. You're comfortable living in the slums. You're comfortable living in the ghettos. You're comfortable not having nothing. You can just walk a few blocks up and they have everything. Y'all have nothing down here. And y'all comfortable with that. Read on. Revelation chapter 1 verse 13. This is a true description of Jesus Christ according to the Bible. Thus saith the word of God. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks. That's why we have menorahs. Turn around, let them see a menorah. That's why we have the menorah. This is the seven candlesticks here. Read on. One like unto the Son of Man. One like unto the Son of Man. One like unto Christ. Read on. Clothed with the garment down to the foot. That's why we have garments clothed down to our foot. Read on. And girt about the past with the golden girdle. He had a golden girdle. We don't have the money to get gold girdles, so those people think we rich. We ain't got money for gold girdles. But when we get in the kingdom, we're going to have gold girdles on. That's Read right. On. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So it gives you the texture of his hair and the color. White like wool. He didn't have long, stringy blonde hair. So yes, color matters. Because they give us a color, they give us hair texture, whether it's black, whether it's black or whether it's blonde, they don't give you woolly hair texture. Read it again. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Read on. As white as snow. Because he had a full head of gray hair. Read on. And his beard. Read on. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Because they tell you in Genesis that his eyes will be red with fire. Read on. And his feet like unto fine brass. Fine brass, a derivative of brown. Read on. As if they burned in a furnace. So Christ was a very dark skinned man. So yes, color does matter. We got to get rid of that lie. We got to get rid of that perception that they give us that it doesn't matter what color Christ is. Because if it didn't matter, they wouldn't change the image. Y'all got to understand the people that control the earth, they thought out. How do we destroy these people? How do we keep them in ignorance? How do we keep their self-esteem low? How do we make them feel like they're nothing? And how do we put ourselves above everybody else? By changing the image of Jesus Christ. By spreading that lie that he was white and he wasn't black. So it is our job today to come as we are in the last days as the Bible speaks up. To give you the truth because what does John chapter 8 verse 32 say? John chapter 8 verse 32. And ye shall know the truth 
and the truth shall make you free. So that is the purpose of us being out here, to set you free from the lies, to set you free from the deceit, to set you free from the poverty, to set you free from the drug addiction, to set you free from the alcoholism, to set you free from the people that are taking every single thing away from you every day. And you wake up every day, you get dressed, and you continue the cycle. That cycle will be broken once the truth is brought to your ears. And you understand who God is. And you understand the purpose of this Bible. Go back to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew 24, verse 5. Many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. When did many come in his name? With lies. Okay, Christianity is a lie. Methodist is a lie. Baptist is a lie. Jehovah's Witness is a lie. Okay, Lutheran is a lie. All these different beliefs are lies. And you have flood the churches every Sunday and listen to lies. So it is our job to come out in the street and tell you that you are indeed the children of, of the Bible. The 12 tribes of Israel, the ones that they say are lost, you're not lost. You're right here walking the earth, breathing, talking, speaking. But everybody's telling you you're lost because they lied to you, starting with the image of Jesus Christ. Sister, you know that this is what Christ looked like? This is what Christ looked like. Did you know that? Christ is a black man, just like you, your skin color. That's important because they lied to you and told you that he was white. Read on. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. So we already have two wars that affect the world. We had World War I when they dropped the bomb on Nagasaki and Hiroshima. We had the fight between Russia and Germany. And then after that fight was over, what did they do? They took those people there that were masquerading around as Jews and the United Nations said, we need to take them and give them a homeland. They've been destroyed. They've been in ruins. They send you pictures all over the TV and in the media of their land being destroyed from war and then they concocted a lie and put them in the Middle East. Not knowing that they were fulfilling Bible prophecy. Not knowing that the seed of Ishmael, the Arab nation, will rise up against them and stop them. And that's now why you hear of terrorism. That's why now you hear of war in the Middle East. Okay? There will be no peace in the Middle East. That place is going to go down in flames. Read your newspaper, pick up, watch your TV. The, your president, Barack Obama, is brokering a deal right now to allow them to get their hands on nuclear capability. Okay, the people that know what's going on, the people that understand the Bible, are saying that this is gonna bring forth doomsday, the end of the world, as you know it. This place is gonna be burned when the Arabs get their hands on nuclear capability, because they say it openly. They say they hate America, they say they hate the Middle East, and it's documented in the Bible. Read the dead. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Every time you turn on the TV, you're hearing about fighting. You're hearing about people being displaced. They're trying to take refugees and find places for them. By the thousands, by the hundreds of thousands, because of fighting and war all around the seat of Ishmael. Give me that in Genesis about him being a wild man. 1316, 1316. Okay, the Bible tells you that the seed of Ishmael is a wild man. That's the Arabs. Y'all can't work out a deal with people. A victory to them is a high body count. They will strap bombs to themselves and blow themselves up in the name of Allah. Allah Akbar. Y'all ain't working out no deals with them because the Most High put the spirit in them this is the spirit that the Most High put in the Arab nation. So you can sit them down at a table, you can broker a deal with them, they're gonna smile, they're gonna act like your friend, okay, they're gonna act like it's all good, and then they're gonna remember their nature and blow y'all the hell up. That's why I'm telling you America's gonna be destroyed. Billions of people are gonna die. That's why we're all here to warn you, because the Bible has it documented. Everything is not going to be all right. You're not going to go to church every Sunday and make that pastor rich forever. That's going to come to an end. Read it. Genesis chapter 16, verse 11. This is the nature of the Arab man, okay? The Arab man was born from a, a slave named Hagar. And this is what the Bible says about his lineage and his descendants today. Read on. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and thou shalt bear a son, 
and shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord have heard thy affliction. And if he you will... get a Bible dictionary and you look who, uh, look up who Ishmael is, a Zondervan Bible dictionary, it will let you know that Ishmael is a descendant of the Arab nations today. So y'all see we're not making this up. Read it again. And he shall be a wild man. He shall be a what? And he shall be a wild man. The Bible tells you that the Arabs are wild men. The Bible tells you that the Arabs are going to go into their nature to put bombs on themselves and blow themselves up because they want back control over that land. Because the Europeans came in that land and took it over under false pretenses. Those people are not the real Jews. You are the real Jews. Right. The descendants right. of the Atlantic slave trade. So God has it in his prophecy that that place is slain as a bird. There will be no more United States of America. Read it again. And he shall be a royal man. His hand shall be against every man. That's why they don't care who they blow up. The Arabs don't care who they blow up. His hand shall be what? His hand shall be against every man. And every man's hand against him. And everybody wants him dead. Everybody, when the Twin Towers went down, everybody joined the military and they all went down there talking about they want to kill Arabs. When they had nothing to do with that place being blown up. That was all set up by this United States government. Now go back to Matthew chapter 24. And ye shall hear wars and rumors of wars. So Christ is explaining what it's going to be like in the last days. Read verse 3 again. I'm sorry, go on. Matthew 24 verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately. So these were the disciples that came up to Christ after Christ told them that the temple was going to be destroyed. Read on. Saying, tell us, what shall be, when shall these things be? When is this destruction coming? When is this earth going to be destroyed is what they were asking. Read on. And what shall be the sign of that coming? Because the whole world is waiting for Christ to come back. And y'all waiting for a white man with blonde hair and blue eyes? The Bible oh, describes him yes, as this. Yes, sir, yes. Read on. And of the end of the world. And that's what you're in right now, ladies and gentlemen. You are now in the end of the world. <laughs> Sit back. Enjoy yourselves or wake up and keep God's commandments. Because either way, you're going to die if you don't listen. You're going to die if you don't listen. We're not out here because we have nothing better to do. We are out here to warn our people that you are in the last day. That's right. Take a look at what's going on on this earth. Everything is going wrong. They put a man of color in office to lie to you. And all of you believe his lies. All of you believe everything is going to get better. Meanwhile, he's brokering a deal to allow the craziest nation on earth to get nuclear capability. Is that not mind boggling? His own people in his cabinet are asking him, what the hell are you doing? Because the Arabs openly say, when they get their hands on nuclear capability, they're gonna send hellfire over here. That's why the Bible describes a great day of fire. Read it again. And, if, and as he said upon the Mount of Olives, his disciples came unto him privately saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? When shall these things be? What is this going to happen? Because the churches ain't talking about it. The church is just telling you everything is going to be all right. Pass a collection plate and let's sing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. That's lies. Read on. And what shall be the sign of thy coming? What is the sign that Christ is coming back to the earth? Read on. And of the end of the world. So this is what's going to happen when we're in the end of the world. This is the truth from the Bible. Read on. And Jesus said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. And you've all been deceived. Because y'all think this image of what Christ looked like in the Bible is not true. Y'all fight to uphold the white image of blonde hair and blue eyed Jesus. A white man named Caesar Borgia. Okay, painted by Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci in the 14th century, the Renaissance period. When the Caucasians took control of the earth, they changed everything. They set up everything in lies. Read on. But many shall come in my name saying, Many shall come in his name saying, What? I am Christ. I am Christ. That's why you got Christianity. That's why you got Methodist. That's why you got Baptist, Jehovah Witness, Pentecostal, Seven day Adventist. They all worshiping white man Jesus. Read on. And shall deceive many. And y'all been deceived. Some of y'all put white man Jesus tattoo on your arm. An Edomite. He's an Edomite according to the Bible. They're nothing. This is what Christ looked like according to the Bible. Read on. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of war. And that's what we're seeing now. I'm not talking about small scale fighting. I'm talking about world wars that affect the world. 
We've already had World War I, we've already had World War II, and World War III is coming. The Bible described it as Armageddon, right. a great day of fire. That's Read right. on. See that you be not troubled. Don't be troubled. Why? For all these things must come to pass. There's nothing you can do to stop it. Read on. But the end is not yet. This is when the end is going to come. Read on. For nations shall rise against nations. You're going to have nations rising against nations. That's why people are being displaced now. It's in the news every day. But when black people get their hands on a new paper, they go straight to the entertainment section, straight to the comics, and straight to sports. Meanwhile, you see hundreds of thousands of people being displaced every day. And nobody's paying attention to it. As long as it doesn't happen here in the United States of America. As long as it don't happen here in Manhattan, you people are fine. Read on. But nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. So when you wake up, you keep hearing about places that are already experiencing food shortages. You're already reading about pestilence, disease, and sickness throughout the earth. You had the Ebola the other day. You had Legionnaire's disease up here the other day. You had ep epidemics of mumps, of measles. Okay, at a time where all this money for cures, everybody's still getting sick. Every time you turn on the damn TV, you see new medicine for new sickness. Read it again. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. So Christ is speaking about, before he died, that a time is gonna come in the future. Let's let this jump back. A time is gonna come in the future where judgment is gonna come to the earth. Give me Luke chapter 17, verse 42, I think it was. Um, about in the last day. Hold on. Right here. Start with. Twenty-four. Luke 17, 24. Watch what Christ said. Luke 17, verse 24. For as the lightning that lighteneth out of the one part under heaven shineth unto the other parts under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be so to his day. He's giving you the path that it's going to be when Christ returns to the earth. This black man is coming to the earth. Not a white man with blonde hair and blue eyes. I challenge anybody to show me different. I challenge anybody to prove me wrong that Christ don't look like this. A black man with woman hair is so dark he look like he was burned and burned. The image of Jesus Christ being white with blonde hair is a lie. That's right. If Christ is hair, he will be a whole of Read on. But first, he must be suffer many things and be rejected. First, he must suffer many things. That's why when he was in Jerusalem, the religious leaders rejected him. The Pharisees, the scribes, the Sadducees, the lawyers, they hated him because he called them hypocrites. The same thing you see today. Hypocrisy is in America. All these churches are liars. Read on. And rejected of this generation. And he was rejected of this generation, the generation that time, the same way this generation is rejecting that black image. You people want to stay alive. Read on. And as it was in the days of Noah, so he said, as it was in the days of Noah, father in Noah's day, you had no warning the people for years that a flood was coming and people were going to die and nobody believed it. Then it started to rain, then everybody came banging on the ark. So that's what Christ is saying. The same thing is going to happen again. You people don't want to listen. And the same thing is going to happen again. Read on. So shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. It's going to be the same way when Christ returns in your time. The same way they wasn't paying attention to Noah. The same way you're not paying attention now. Read on. They did eat. They drank. Are these people not eating here? They in the stores buying stuff? Oh, then they're basking by drinking stuff. Read on. They married wives. Are you not arranging for marriages? Are you not in your relationships now? Read on. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. So the same way that the people were carrying on before the flood of Noah's ark is the same thing y'all doing right now. Read on. And the flood came and destroyed them all. They got caught by surprise. They were taught, caught off guard. The same thing is going to happen to y'all because y'all don't believe it's going to happen. Read on. Likewise also it, it was in the day of Lot. The time of Lot when the Lord allowed fire and brimstone to rain from the sky and kill everybody. Read on. They did eat. They drank. They bought. They sold. Is that not what we see now? 
That's why we picked this corner. Because you're drinking, you're eating, you're buying, and you're selling. Read on. They planted, it, they built it. But the same day that- Look at the construction companies. All these buildings going up. That building over there was just destroyed. They put it right back up. They're acting like nothing's not gonna happen. Read it again. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven. The Lord allowed destruction to come out the side and burn up the city. Read on. And destroyed them all. And destroyed everybody. The same thing is going to happen to the United States of America. Except Christ said it's going to be from a war that takes place in the Middle East. By the great river Euphrates. Where you have the Arab nations now. Iraq and Iran. You have ISIS. Y'all see it every time y'all keep hearing about ISIS or ISIL. Those Arabs are rising up and they're going to destroy this place. Read on. Read it again. Even thus shall it be in a day when the Son of Man is revealed. Even so it's going to be right now on this earth. Everybody's relaxed. Everybody thinks nothing's going to happen. Everybody's looking at us like we're crazy. Read on. In that day, he which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. Let him not come down. What's that? That's just that's for sister. Come forth, sister. Sister. So what time do y'all be here? Okay, because I'm going to a meeting from 7 o'clock. Yeah, we got to be gone, man. I'll be right back. Okay, most people like, okay, so to them tomorrow is Jewish holiday, right? Right. Mm -hmm. As I understand, you're all Jewish, right? We, we follow the customs of the Bible. We're not Jewish. When you put ish on yes. it, you mean you're like the Jews. Jewish. We telling you we the real Jews. <laughs> what nationality are you? Dominican. You are real Jew. You are part of the 12 tribes of Israel. The Dominican people are Simeon in the Bible. If you look at the slave trade, the curse was on the Dominican people that they will be put on ships, they will be taken to other countries, and they will lose their heritage, their land, their identity, and their culture. Okay, and when that happened to us as a people, the Europeans changed everybody's name. There's no such thing as Dominican in the Bible. There's no such thing as Jamaican in the Bible. There's no such thing as Moreno in the Bible. There's no such thing as Puerto Rican in the Bible. Puerto Rican comes from the word rich port. Okay? When the conquistadors conquered those people, they took their riches. The Puerto Rican people were rich people. Okay? But when they took you on these slave ships and they kept you in captivity and chains for hundreds of years, they changed history. They changed your identity. Exactly. 
correctly, okay? But voting is a lie. Democrat, Republican, it's all lies. No, my last it's question. It's all a setup. Go ahead, go ahead. What do you think about the Pope Francis coming to New York? The Pope is all a gimmick. The Pope is all foolishness to deceive the people, to make, to keep a perception that they're holy. They're the biggest liars. They're the biggest murderers. They're the biggest drug dealers so in the Vatican. Yes, they are. There's nothing, to, there's nothing of piety with him. There's nothing of holiness with him. Okay, because the only way that, you know, giving, um, Malachi chapter 2 verse 7. This is how you know if a man of, of, uh, as a, of a man is a God. Now my question. To say I'm tomorrow is Jewish politics. And then the Pope is coming on Friday. In the Spanish channel, I heard them talking that by the Pope coming to New York, there might be some earthquake or something going on. Can that be yeah. possible? It's not going to happen. Yeah. Slide. Slide. But it could, probably, not, it could be possible. Why it could be possible? Because the Pope is in New York, let's say, and he's preaching or whatever you're saying by, and then something could happen so that you lose the faith in him. The Bible says... Who is in control of the earth? God. And God says, God says... No? no, okay, give me Job 9.24. This is your answer. Job 9.24. This is what the Bible says. Job chapter 9. Verse 24. You ask a question. Go ahead, Job. We're gonna answer that. Job 9. Job 9:24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. The wicked people now control it. Yes. So you're right about that. Read on. Read on. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. And the wicked people that control the earth, they cover the face of the judges. That's why you're calling yourself Dominican instead of Simeon, like the Bible says. You come from a royal priesthood. You come from a lineage of great people. But they gave you that name Dominican, the same way they gave um, Hispanics, Puerto Rican. They gave blacks, Moreno. They gave West Indian, Jamaican. Those things are not in the Bible. When they took control of the earth, they spread lies through the earth. And that's why we're out here now. So you can question us and we answer you with the Bible. Give me Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 5. We answer you. Say that again. So the wicked, you say. The wicked controls the earth. Who's passing laws for same-sex marriage? Obama. Okay. All right. The who, first president because who, he's going to a Republican. Who is brokering arms deals to allow Middle Eastern countries to get their hands on nuclear capability? People that openly say they want to burn this place. They put bombs on themselves and say they're going to blow themselves up for Allah. Why would you give them nuclear capability? Obama's doing that. Who did the, the, the stimulus plan? He took $765 billion from us and put it into the economy. What do we get? We didn't see none of that money. No other president did that. Okay, your rent is going up. Your insurance is going up. Well, they put him there so you could blame the black president. Exactly. That's why I said. So you don't vote for another black president. That's why I said I want intelligent people to speak. Not everybody speaks like you. Everybody else, if Barack Obama comes out, that brings into my ears and I get inspired. Hey, hey. Because, because the spirit in you is the spirit of God. Amen. So when you hear the truth, it resonates in your spirit. So I, I have asked this question a couple of times. When you pray, you pray to Jesus or you always when you pray, our prayer, our, our prayer is to God. Mm -hmm. Okay, but, but there's somebody. I'm sorry. Somebody but told me that there's a lot of God. Like there's only one God. One God. No, there's they say there's a lot of God. There's one they creator. say there's a lot of God. Watch this. Watch this. Supposedly the one that was the angel of God, he is called another God, and you know what I'm talking about. That's that's um, Christianity. Yeah, that's Christianity. Christianity. Christianity that's not according to the Bible. Okay, that's why. Hold on, give me the one I said. Jeremiah 17 verse five. Watch this. Watch this, sis. Jeremiah 17 verse. Walk away with this. Jeremiah 17 verse five. Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man. Say it again. Cursed be the man that trusteth in man. So I don't trust no man. I trust only the words of God. Read on. And make it flesh his arm. And make it flesh his arm. The, the, my spirit, my power is spiritual, not fleshly arms of man. Read on. And whose heart departed from the Lord. So go ahead. What was your question? So this is why I always put... In God, I only trust. Yes. You know what? There's a restaurant on 116 and 8th Avenue. And I feel that it's very respectful. 
Do you know what's the name of the restaurant? What? What is it? Anger. I only trust. Wow. Okay. Where is it on 160? 160 on the. You see the C train? Or on that side? Oh, okay, all the way on the west side. On 8th Avenue. Right. But it's on the side when you're coming up, on that side, it's a new restaurant. And you see there, it says. I know it, I know it. In Burr, I only trust. I, I think it. that is very disrespectful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it, I know it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God bless you. Read Jeremiah 17 and 5 again. Jeremiah 17, verse 5. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man. Say it again. Cursed be the man that trusteth in man. So if someone is speaking to you about God and they don't have the Bible, do not believe them. The Bible says that we must speak according to the oracles of God. Read on. And make it flesh his arm. We're not supposed to get our strength from fleshly men on this earth. Our power is spiritual. Our power is a God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Read on. And whose heart departed from the Lord. Because man's heart has departed from the Lord. So it is our job to bring your heart back to the Lord. Give, to, go back to Matthew chapter. Go back to Luke. I'm sorry. Go back to Luke. All right, brother. All right, brother. All oh, praises. You got a flyer? Yeah. Good. Every Saturday. Every Saturday. Every Saturday. Yes. Every Saturday. Okay. What was it? Luke 17. Luke 17, okay. verse 32. Luke 17. Start with. 28. Luke 17, 28. Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot. So a lot of people like to scare you into making you believe that things are going to happen in the last days that are not going to happen. Okay? The Bible gives you an analogy. He says it'll be like in the days of Noah, and it'll be like in the days of Lot. Read on. They did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But the same so day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone. It's going to be in an instant. From one day to the next, the destruction is coming, and you're going to be caught off guard. Because you have a lot of camps that will tell you they're going to round you up and put you in concentration camps. They're going to be injecting microchips into you. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible makes it clear that you're going to be eating, drinking, planting, buying, selling. You're not going to know. Because if they started putting microchips in everybody, people would change the way they're living. If they started putting people in concentration camps, people would change the way they were living. Read it again. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven. So from one day to the next, the destruction is going to come. Read on. And destroyed them all. And destroyed everybody. That's why Christ said he's coming like a thief in the night. Read on. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Read again. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. When Christ returns to the earth, Christ is the Son of Man. It's going to be the same thing as in the days of Noah and in the days of Lot. Read on. In that day. He which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. So he's telling you don't have your mind on worldly things. Read on. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Don't have your mind on worldly things. Be prepared. Read on. Remember not to fight. Remember Lot's wife. So then Christ says to remember Lot's wife. Because Lot's wife didn't believe. Okay, although her husband was a righteous man, it tells you there was none like him at that time. He was trying to explain to his wife that destruction was coming, but in the back of her head, she didn't believe. Like a lot of you people out here, you don't believe. Read it again. Remember Lot's wife. Whosoever shall seek to save his life Which shall some of y'all are trying to do right now. All you're concerned with is going to work, your relationships, school, Okay, money, entertainment, read it again. Whosoever shall seek to save this life shall lose it. This life, you have to walk like it can be taken away from you any day. Because the scriptures say, whoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. Some of you, your whole focus from the time you wake up to the time you go to sleep is what you're going to do the next day. None of your mind is on the most high God. None of your minds are on his son, Jesus the Christ. 
Read on. And whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. You have to lose your life the way that you're living here now to preserve it. What does it mean to lose your life? Take away the attachment that you have to this world, the spiritual attachment you have to this world. Your loyalty is to your job. Your loyalty is to your money. Your loyalty is to your wife. Your loyalty is to your husband. Your loyalty is to your king. When your loyalty should be to God. Read it again. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. All of you are doing things to preserve this present life. And destruction is right around the corner. Read on. And whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. The ones who lose their life are the ones who go into the scriptures and find a way to connect with the Most High God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The ones that repent because his son was sent to this earth to die for the remissions of sin so that you can have life now by keeping his commandments. Read on. I tell you, in that night there shall be two men in one bed and the one shall be taken and the other shall be left. Why is one going to be taken and the other one left? Because one is going to hear our voice and keep the commandments. The other one is going to live their lives in lies. Read it again. I tell you that in that night there shall be two men in one bed. The one shall be taken, the other shall be left. Because a lot of you think everybody's going up. Everybody's not going up. The Most High is going to hand pick who's going to go up based on the way that they walk on this earth based on their application of his laws, based on their belief that they can get salvation through his son dying, through his blood being spilled. Read on. Two women shall be grinding together. One shall be taken and the other left. Grinding together will be at your jobs, at work. You're gonna be taken from your workplace. The one that came to work with her skirt on, with her head covered, with her fringes on, in righteousness at her job will be taken. The other one with skin tight jeans will her breasts out, Tattoos all over our body will be left behind to die because you are disobedient to the laws of God. Read on. Two men shall be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. Notice all you keep saying is about separation, separation, separation. Because some people are going to hear, some people are going to forbear. Read on. And they answered and said unto him, Where, Lord? And he said unto them, what did they ask him? Where, Lord? So all of you should be asking the same question. Where? When is this going to happen? Why is this destruction coming? Read on. Wheresoever the body is, thither will the eagles be gathered together. Because the scriptures tell you that the carcasses are going to come to eat the dead flesh, to eat the dead bodies. Many of you are going to be destroyed from the thermonuclear fire that's coming. America is about to be destroyed. Every day you see it, it's right in front of your faces. Barack Obama was put in place to allow this war to take place. Right. He lied to you. You people were rejoicing with the American flag when he was put in office. But guess what? It was to deceive you. It was to pass policies to put you to sleep. It was to put things in place to make you feel like everything's going to be all right. Everything is not going to be all right. Read on. Give me... Ezekiel chapter 33 verse 30. Ezekiel chapter 33 verse 30. Also thou son of man, children of that people, the children of that people still are talking against thee by the wall. People see the us, people see us out here speaking and they're talking about them Israelites. You have Israelites all over the world. You have them waking up. Now that you have YouTube, before they were hidden. Now you're starting to see them everywhere. And now you're questioning the church system. You're questioning religion. You're questioning Christianity. You're questioning Catholicism. Okay? The Pope coming to the United States is all to put you back to sleep again. He has no power over God. He's not of God. He's not working with God. And all of you are excited for him to come here. It's all for deception. He's not following nothing in this Bible. Read it again. Also, thou son of man, the children of that people are still talking against thee by the walls and in the doors. So it's documented in the scriptures that people are in their houses talking, running their mouth, because they don't believe that this is going to pop off. 
They don't believe that the United States of America is going to be burned. There will be no more Manhattan. There will be no more Bronx. There will be no more Brooklyn. There will be no more Queens. There will be no more Jersey. This place is going to burn. Right, that's, right. And that's what we're all here to tell you. Repent or die. America is going to be destroyed according to this Bible. Everything is not going to be all right. Read it again. Also thou son of man, the children of thy people are still talking against thee by the walls and in the doors of the houses. Read on. And speak one to another, every one to his brother, saying, Come, I pray you, and hear what is the word that cometh forth from the Lord. And you see that on YouTube. Everybody's coming by, they're looking at the views, they're like, oh, I heard about you people. I heard about you Israelites. Okay, because there are many different sects of Israelites out here. Read on. And they come unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy word. People are passing by, they're hearing the words, they're looking at us, they're stopping for a minute, they're listening, but what's the response? Read on. But they will not do them. But what? But they will not do them. Okay, they just want to hear because they don't believe that this is going to happen. They don't believe that destruction is coming. They don't believe that destruction is right around the corner. Read on. But with their mouth they show much love. You guys are good. I like the way you pull those scriptures out. Answer this question. Answer that question. They show much love with their mouth. Read on. And they will not do them. And what? And they will not do them. But they ain't doing nothing that we're telling them according to this Bible. They're not doing anything that we're telling them according to this Bible. But we don't care because what we already know that according to the Bible, one third of the Israelites are going to wake up. One third of the Israelites are going to hear this word. God says my word does not go out void. Right. That's right. Read it again. And they come unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people. Because you have people standing here. You have people passing. You have people looking. Read on. And they hear thy words, but they will not do them. And we're fine with you not doing them. It's not our job to come out here and try and save you. The words of God is what saves you. When you believe in the words of God, when you repent and keep the commandments and return back to him as the Israelites, the 12 tribes that you see on this side, that's how you get saved. Read on. For with their mouth they show much love, but with their heart, but with their heart goes after their covetousness. Their heart goes after their covetousness. What's their covetousness when they pass by? Oh, I gotta hurry up and go home and cook dinner. Oh, I gotta go to my job. Oh, I gotta meet my boyfriend. Oh, I gotta meet my girl, she's down the block. Look, the other couple that was here. Because their mind is never on the focus of God. God put us out here to speak in the streets and condemn you with the word of God. So that you cannot say that you didn't hear it. None of you will be able to say you didn't hear the word. None of you will be able to, hear, to say when that day of judgment comes that I, what, 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 what happened? I don't know what's going on. This is not fair. Read on. And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely soul. Because you have people that love to read the Bible. They love to switch from channel to channel to watch them talking about the word of God. So it's like a lovely song to them. They love to hear people quoting scriptures. Read on. And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song. You got some people, you on the train, they have the Bible open, they read it the whole train ride. Okay, you have people, they drive in their car, the Bible is open on the dashboard. You come in their house, the Bible is there. It's like a very lovely song to them. Read on. Of one that has a pleasant voice. And it's like the hearing the word of God being spoken, it's like a pleasant voice. They just love to hear the words of God. Read on. And can play well on an instrument. You guys know how to pull those scriptures. You guys know your Bible. What does the Bible say here? What does the Bible say here? Well, like one that can play well on an instrument. Read on. For they hear thy words. They hear us in the street screaming at the top of our lungs. Read on. But they do them not. But what? But they do them not. They don't do nothing. There is no change in our people. They're happy with the term Negro on them. They're happy with the term Puerto Rican on them. They're happy with the term Dominican on them. They're happy with the term Mexican on them. They're happy with the term Cuban on them. And we're trying to tell them that they are the children of the living power, the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay? That's what we're out here to, to proclaim to you, to the captives. We're out here to proclaim liberty, to proclaim freedom to you. 
that you don't have to die like everybody else. That's so right. You must return back to your God. You must keep the commandments of God. That's right. Read it again. Ezekiel 33, 32. And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song. So us speaking is like a very lovely song to you. Y'all don't care about this. This is music to your ears to see these black men. People call us, oh, it's a wonderful thing to see black men with Bibles on the corner. We don't care. Read on. As one that hath a pleasant voice. Yo, the way you guys break the scriptures down. Oh, you sound so good. Read on. And can play well on an instrument. You, you guys are so good the way you go into that Bible. Read on. For they hear thy words, but they do them not. They hear the words of God and they do them not. Read on. And when it cometh to pass. And when it comes to pass. What did I say? That this place is going to be destroyed. That the judgment of God was going to come to here. America was going to be burned. Because y'all don't believe it's going to be burned. Read on. No. It will come. Yes, it will come. Yes, the destruction is coming that we spoke of. Read on. Then shall they know that a prophet hath been among them. Then shall they know that the men that were speaking on the streets were prophets. We were coming thus saith the Lord. We were coming out of the Bible. And you walked by and you didn't listen. Give me Isaiah chapter 30 verse 8. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 8. Now go, write it before them in a table. Note it in a book. And that's why we coming out the Bible, so nobody can call us liars. The Lord says, write it before them in a table, and note it before them in a book. Read on. That it may be for a time to come. And the time to come is now. Read on. Forever and ever. Because these writings, these writings were from the beginning of time, and they're going to last forever. That what? That this is a rebellious people. These people are rebellious. That's why they don't want to listen to the word of God. That's why they keep going and acting like nothing ain't happening. They can't get touched. Read on. Lying children. Lying children. Our people are liars. They complain about their condition. They complain about their finances. They complain about their hope. And they don't want nothing to do. They will not return to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob for hope. Read on. Children that will not hear the law of the Lord. That's why they pass them by. It was like them niggas just talk with Bibles. I don't want to hear nothing about no Bible. I don't want to hear nothing about no God. That's how your mothers are. That's how your fathers are. That's how your children are. That's how your husbands are. That's how your wives are. They're lying people who don't want to hear the word of God. Read on. Which say to the seers, see not. The seers are the men that have the Bible and see the visions of God and bring them to everybody else. What do they say to the seers? Which say to the seers, see not. We don't want to hear nothing about America being destroyed. We want to hear everything's going to be all right. We're going to hear be washed in the blood of Jesus and Jesus loves you. Read on. And to the prophets, prophesy not unto us. Right there. They don't want to hear the right things concerning God. Y'all want to hear that Christ is white with blonde and blue eyes. Okay? Y'all want to hear that everything is going to be all right. And that's not what you're going to hear out here. You're going to hear that this place is going to be burned. That's right. Everybody who don't follow the Bible is going to die. That's right. Read it again. Which say to the seer, see not. You don't want us to see the things of God. The word of God. Read on. And to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. You don't want us to prophesy to you the right things concerning the word of God. Read on. Speak unto us smooth things. Y'all want to be spoken to like T.D. Jakes, Joe Osteen. This is your season. No, Negroes, this is not your season. Everything is not going to be all right. This place is on the verge of destruction. This place is going to burn. Y'all have a short time in this place here right now. It's coming to an end. Shalom, Israel. I'm Eldon Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure the 
as truth gets out, please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.